Understanding the normal or Gaussian distribution. The normal distribution, also known as the Gaussian distribution, is a special probability model where the data is scattered symmetrically about a central mean value. The normal distribution is often referred to as bell curve simply because it resembles a bell. Where does the normal distribution come from? The normal distribution occurs due to random error. Random errors in measurement are equally likely to push our readings above or below the true value. For instance, if you were to measure the mass of a spoonful of sugar a thousand times, the data points would produce a histogram following a normal distribution. Characteristics The normal distribution has a mean, median, and mode that are all equal to each other. Remember the mean is the average of all the values, the median is the middle value, and the mode is the number that appears most frequently. Symmetry about the center, and 50% of the values below the mean, and 50% of the values above the mean. Some real world examples. Grades on the test, where C is the average middle value. IQ scores, where 100 is the average middle value. Heights of people. In particular, the heights of middle-aged men in the US. Most males in America would be around 5 feet 8 inches tall and would lie in the middle of the distribution. Those taller would be found on the right and those shorter would be found on the left. As we approach the right side of the curve, the height of an individual gradually increases on the x-axis. Meanwhile, the number of individuals gradually decreases on the y-axis. Now let's take a look at the standard deviation of a normal distribution. First off, what is standard deviation? Standard deviation is an estimate of the average uncertainty in measurements. If we were to go back to the histogram of grades on the test, we'll see that each of the colored bars is equivalent to one standard deviation. To calculate standard deviation, you can use the following formula. Imagine you measure the mass of a spoonful of sugar 10 times and obtain the following values in grams. From these values, we can calculate the mean to be 41.37 grams and the standard deviation to be 1.44 grams. Therefore, if you measure another spoonful of sugar and obtain 39 grams, you can state with 68% confidence that the mass of sugar is in the range. 39 plus or minus 1.44 grams. Where are we getting this value of 68% confidence from? That's what we're going to discuss next. Given that you have data that follows the normal distribution, when you calculate the standard deviation of this data, 68% lie within one standard deviation of any given measurement, 95% lie within two standard deviations of any given measurement, and 99.7% lie within three standard deviations of any given measurement. In particular, standard deviation of the mean would look something like this. Standard deviation of the mean. The equation for standard deviation applies to any given measurement. But what if you specifically want to calculate standard deviation of the mean, like in the picture we saw in the slide before? It turns out that there's a formula for this as well. The standard deviation of the mean is almost identical to the plain standard deviation formula, except the standard deviation of the mean has an additional n factor in the denominator. A good way to think about the difference between the two is standard deviation is a measure of how spread apart the individual points are from each other. Meanwhile, the standard deviation of the mean is a measure of how far a data point is from the mean value. Given the same 10 measurements of a spoonful of sugar in grams, when you calculate standard deviation of the mean, where the mean is 41.37 grams, you obtain 0.456 grams. 
Therefore, you may state with 68% confidence that the average mass of a spoonful of sugar is within one standard deviation of the mean, with 95% confidence that it is within two standard deviations of the mean, and with 99.7% confidence that it is within three standard deviations of the mean. Disclaimer. You typically need more than 10 data points to establish a normal distribution. In fact, it often takes a few hundred points to establish a normal distribution. Although for the sake of easy calculation examples, we stuck to a small sample size. Using our knowledge of standard deviation, how can we apply it to our measurements? Being able to calculate standard deviation allows us to decide whether two measurements are statistically similar or statistically divergent. When comparing two measurements A and B, you find the hypotenuse value of the two standard deviations of the means. If the absolute value of A minus B is less than the hypotenuse value, then the measurements are statistically similar. If the absolute value of A minus B is greater than the hypotenuse value, then the measurements are statistically divergent.